Proudly, we hail. New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled the chef. The chef is actually a mess sergeant with a sure touch with any kind of food, or chow if you will. Our mess sergeant, Andy Novak, wins a girl with his onion soup, and then he's in the soup. Our curtain rises in just a moment. But first, young fella, if you're planning for military service, here's a man you should get to know. He's your local army recruiter, and he has the deal you're looking for. He can offer you your choice of ways to serve. You can choose a technical course and have a written guarantee of a space reserved for you before you enlist. There are more than 150 courses. They're sure to be one right down your alley. Or your recruiter can get you into the army branch you want. Armor, artillery, engineers, name your spot. And there are other choices open to you, such as overseas assignments. So if you want choice, not chance, you'd better talk to your army recruiter first thing. There's no obligation. Get the full story on your place in the modern United States Army. And now we present the proudly we hail production of The Chef. Hey, soldier, wait up. First sergeant says London be a nice corporal and show that new man Frost where the mess hall is. I figured if I followed the crowd, I couldn't miss it. Private Frost, in this outfit, you don't need to follow the crowd. Take a deep sniff. Mm, roast beef. Hey, wait a minute. And baked bread. And probably pies right out of the oven. Hey, uh, did somebody steer you to B Company? What do you mean? You don't know? You don't know about the chef? Chef? <laughs> Corporal London, I haven't been in the Army very long, and I, I've been in France just about two days. Let's I move don't... on. I'm hungry. Now, about the chef. He's Sergeant Novak. The best cook ever to pass out seconds to a bunch of hungry soldiers. Frosty, you've inherited him. Now, uh, tell me, how much do you weigh? <laughs> about 145. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you, after a couple of months out in the air and Chef Novak's food, you'll be about 160. What? And it'll be all solid stuff, no fat. Hold up here, buddy. We've got a few minutes yet. So I'm lucky, huh? You don't know how lucky. This guy is fabulous. And when he's happy, wow. He makes all kinds of extra desserts with anything left over, you see. He, he disguises things. He's a camouflage expert. He even gets soldiers to eat things they swear they don't like because he makes them taste so good. I'm telling you, this chef is terrific. Hey, you're making me hungry. There's one thing you should know, though. Don't ever say anything about seeing a French girl who isn't gorgeous. What? Sergeant Novak is in love, you see, with a French girl named Angela, and therefore all French girls are beauties. Maybe I'm dumb, but I don't see why a fella can't say that a few of them are... Never. Well, not... Never even think of it. Come on, let's go. Time to go in. Oh, <laughs> you're right. Uh -huh. Sergeant Novak is a darn good cook. I even ate broccoli, and my mother's been trying for years to have me eat broccoli. Okay, and now you make your courtesy call. We go to see the chef. We... Oh, look, are you kidding? No! Every new man in B Company must meet the chef. Come on, let's go. What am I supposed to say? Don't worry about it. Come in. Well, new man, London? Yep. And he liked your double cream delight. Good. That makes 30 men who like the double cream delight. This is Private Frost from Peoria, Chef. How are you? Hi. Let me get out my preference book. Okay. Now, Frost, write down here what desserts you like, right in this column. What? And over here, how you like your steaks done. Sergeant Novak, is this a gag? No, it's not a gag. He wants to know, so he cooks the right way for the right man. I'll just sign it. All right, all right. I, I was just asking. London, uh, do you hear about Angela and me? No, not an argument. No, no argument. We're... Uh, we're going to get married. Hey, great! <laughs> uh, 
Maybe it's none of my business, but I thought, uh, well, I mean, her father being mayor of Le Portal and all that, uh, maybe he had a rich Frenchman picked out or something. Uh, you know, uh, the French like husbands with money. Uh, here, I filled in the book. Is it okay? Yeah, that, that looks all right. Uh, London, about this money thing, I haven't talked to Papa Dorsey yet. You think he'll ask how much money I make? Well, he knows that. What I meant is uh, the French like to have uh, son-in-laws to have some cash, you know? Mm. I just lent my brother all the money I'd saved. I haven't got any cash. Well, I wouldn't worry about it. You can always say uh, you have investments. Uh, now you got me worried. I'll tell you what, I'm going over to Angela's tonight. How about going along? You could give me moral support. Huh? Sure, glad to do it. Just stay happy, that's all. I'd just like you to stay happy. <laughs> You think you'll get the cold shoulder, Corporal Lander? Wish I had a mirror. Is this tie knot straight? Pretty like? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Do you think you'll get the cold shoulder? My dear inexperienced private, like I said, the chef is a wonderful cook when he's feeling good and still better than any civilian cook, even when he isn't feeling right. So, just to make sure that we get all these extra special desserts and things, we try to keep him feeling wonderful. Now, it is up to me, as the duly constituted guardian of the happy calories, to make sure that the chef gets his woman. Comprendez-vous? What? You ready, London? All set. Hey, Frosty, how about coming along? I, I need a lot of support. Well, look, I, I don't even know one French word. You know how it is. Oh, I... no sweat. This family speaks English good. Come on with us. If London gets tied up, you'll get an idea, maybe. Well, if you insist. He insists. <laughs> this is the place. Pretty house. Old, but nice. Yeah. Uh, listen, Chef, uh, Frosty and I will stay out of it unless the old man gets you all tied up. Uh, uh, then we think up answers about why you'd make a good husband. Is that it? Yeah, that'll, that'll do. Uh -huh. Just everybody cross your fingers. Let's go. Yeah, hold it, hold it. Chef, uh, just in case I mention it, do they know that you're baking a big cake for the wedding? Look, it's legal. I, I bought the ingredients. Mess officer gave me permission. No, 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 no I don't mean that. I mean, uh, you know, in case they aren't impressed with you. The, 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 this cake, it's great. Uh, Maybe they should see it. Maybe it's none of my business, Sergeant Novak and Corporal London, but I just don't get it. You say you're baking a big cake and yet the old man hasn't given permission yet? I guess I, I, I sort of got a little ahead. We, we planned on getting married tomorrow. At least I did. I, I, I've got the papers. Tomorrow? Chef, the well, Papa I... won't stand still for that. It's too soon. Well, yeah, maybe it is. Maybe I get stuck with the cake. Huh? Well, here goes. Uh, yes, Angel. Uh, this is Corporal London Private ah. Frost. They're in my company. I'm so happy to know you, gentlemen. Uh, glad to know Pleasure. You. Uh, please come in. Papa will be home any time, huh? Uh, yes. No Pardon? wise crack. Why well, not cracking wise? But come, come right in here. Angel, uh, look. Have you have you said anything to your papa? Well, I have mentioned it. He wants to talk to you. He didn't say yes. Uh, no, we. I think, I think maybe we'll have a little bit of trouble. You see, in France, marriages are not so quick. But I've known you for eight months, Angel. But, but we did not announce our engagement. He's right, Chef. But uh, my cake. That's the biggest cake I've ever started. I've started invitations. No, Novi, you must be patient. Hey, London, let's leave them alone. I got an idea he'll need me when Papa comes back. Stick it out. Angel, I thought your Papa liked me. He, he, he said I made the best onion soup he's tasted outside of some fancy restaurant in Paris. Novi, Papa likes your soup, but... That does not mean that he lets me marry you without a talk. Let's get... This isn't any of our business. Relax. You know, back home, if a guy goes with a girl for eight months, her father gets the idea, particularly if they go steady. Steady? I don't understand what is this steady. Uh, well, all, all the time, I mean, you know, with just one fella. Oh, well, I understand, but... Uh, well, Papa, he, he thought maybe there would be something, what do you say, in the wind? But he waited, and I think... I think Papa will be all right. I think he will say yes if we wait maybe a year. A year? I might be in Japan in a year. Well, then you can get married again in a kimono. <laughs> Second marriage ceremonies Shut are fun. I... That's very funny. But I think that was a cute saying. I would love to go to Japan. Oh, I think this is Papa now. What? Mon cher Papa, Novi, uh, I mean, Sergeant Novak would like to speak to you. Uh. Uh, may I be excused, eh? Uh, oui, oui. Uh, let me take my seat. Uh, uh, it's a fine day. 
And I have traversed to my village, ascertaining the wishes of my constituents. Well, you know, I was a poll watcher once in Peoria. We oh, used to... Peoria? Yeah. Mm. Now, uh, Sergeant Novak, I would be obtuse if I did not know what you have in mind. I have noticed the moonstruck appearance of my daughter. I have seen your adoring glances. Uh, yeah, precisely. Now, ask me. Uh, sir, you, uh, you took him by surprise. Well, well Mr. Dorsey, sir, uh, <coughs> Angela and I, I mean, I, I would like to marry your daughter. Had a boy? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I think Private Frost and I will leave now. You, uh, you and Sergeant Novak want to talk, I think. What I have to say, anyone can hear. If Sergeant Novak wants you to leave, that is his concern. <coughs> well, uh, st stick around, fellas. Now, <coughs> there are certain requirements, uh, Sergeant Novak. I have noted that you are industrious. I have noted that you are held in high esteem by your fellow soldiers. However, yes, sir. there are other things that I, as a dutiful father, must fathom. One, when would the ceremony take place? In a few days, sir. What? Impossible! But, sir, if you hold him up, the dessert stops. Ross, that is very unfortunate. But I cannot approve an early marriage. Now, if you will excuse me, gentlemen, I have uh, governmental duties. We shall discuss the marriage in, say, uh, six months. I must get upstairs to my office. I shall summon Angela. Well, that's that. Oh, there go the double creamy delights. That reminds me. Frost, you talk too doggone much. That's all right, London. He meant well. There goes the marriage. I, I, I move out in seven months. No. Yeah. I could have put in to stay longer, but I thought Angela and I could get married and have a chance to get used to each other on her home grounds. I know it'd be easier for her and for me, too. Oh, love, I heard it. Oh, this is terrible. Dessert-wise and marriage-wise. But we must not give up the ship. Private Frosty, you are right. Novi, I have been thinking. There is still a chance. There is? Yes, my father has two weaknesses. He is conceited about his French pastry, and he cannot deny a wager. I think you call it a bet, huh? When he thinks he has a better than even chance. I get it, a horse race. No, a no. baking race. Mm -hmm. Angel, what do you mean? Yeah, tell us quick. Well, it is this way. Papa is entering the Le Portal baking contest again this year. Always he wins. Always his pastries are much better than anyone else. No, if you should bet him, shall we say, the entire cost of the wedding in six months against a wedding in which he shall pay for in a week, shall we say? I think he'll be so confident he'll agree. He liked the six-month part and also the paying up all expense by you. Oh, Angel, I couldn't afford it. I, I, I never tried French but pastry. But many receipts and you're a good baker. And if you lose, I think the company will come through to help you pay because part of the bet is a wedding and that means you will get married. And you can practice on the company. I'll eat the first pastry every time. Our hero. Uh, but Angel, you say he always wins. Always. But last year he got a little careless. His pastry is not so pretty as once it was. And there are points for appearance too. No. If you can match him in the taste and make your pastry very beautiful, we may win. Right. Well, sure, you can make it look like the Eiffel Tower, only a little smaller uh, and with no elevator. Novi, you can do it. I can? Of course you can. Darn right. right. You see, everybody knows you can do it. No, I'm not too sure. If I lose, I'm in debt for the rest of my life. But, but, I'll bet him. <laughs> You are listening to Proudly We Hail. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. High school graduates, if you're of service age, we feel sure you'll be interested in the reserved for you training program of your United States Army. This program is filled with opportunities for the young men of today who want to equip themselves with a top-notch skill and serve their country at the same time. Here's how it works. You make application at your nearest United States Army recruiting station at which time you state your preference of training course. There are more than 150 courses to choose from. Now this application does not place you under obligation to enlist. If you qualify and a vacancy exists, you'll receive a letter of acceptance that is your guarantee of a reserved seat in the course of your choice. So, if you expect to serve a tour of duty in the near future, make sure you make the most of your opportunities. Visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station and talk it over with the friendly people there. You're listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Chef. Mm. 
Hey, how's the king of the calories? Come into the mess office. Okay, sit down. Now look, old buddy, I'm your friend. Sit down, I said. Now, if you're mad because I skimped on those pants, sit. Like... Okay, Sergeant, well, that okay. You see this piece of pastry? French pastry. I knew you could do it. You knew I could do it. Huh? Two minutes ago, I gave a piece of this pastry to Pop, the janitor. You know what he said? No, I'm afraid of, afraid of what he said. Uh huh. Well, he said it. He said, Mr. Novak, these pastries, she is not as good, as bon as the pastry the mayor. He ma That's what Pop, the janitor, said. Oh, what? The, he's a spy. spy. He was sent here to undermine your morale. Oh, Loney, he knows pastry. That's what. He knows that I can't beat a Frenchman at his own business. Would you try to beat a Japanese wrestler in judo? No. But you talk me into betting Angela's popping up. Uh, you mean he steak? accepted that bet? Sure, he accepted the bet. He knows a dead cinch when he sees it. You know what's going to happen, my dessert-eating corporal London? I'll tell you what. He'll beat me with stale pastry, that's what. And then I wait for six more months to marry Angela. And then I pay for the whole wedding. Maybe even his wedding cake. Now, look, yeah, Sheffy, you look. got yourself all worked up. Mm -hmm. Look, you're a terrific baker. I can show you three soldiers who'll swear to that. I cannot bake French pastry. You only tried once. Oh. You still got a few days before the contest. Try a couple of more batches. Try some more recipes. Look, I can get a hundred volunteers to eat everything you bake. And another thing, I can't afford to buy any more flour and eggs and milk. And I'm broke until pay. Hold it, I hold it. I got it, I got it. That part's easy. Now, you just sit down and open up a couple of fancy dessert books while I do a little business. Stay right here. Quiet. Man, sitting back there, his shoulders all slumped, his face wrinkled from worry, is the best doggone mess sergeant in an army that's loaded with good mess sergeants. All right, now we all know he's tops. But tonight, Sergeant Novak, the chef, is just about beaten by a French baker. No, but it's true. Men, we can make him happy and keep him happy by getting a load of French flour, French eggs, French milk for him to practice with. Not that this is any better than American stuff, it's just that it can't be spared from our rations. Now, can we do it? Okay, that's the company spirit. Now, I'm taking off my cap and I'm passing it around. Now, let's go. One teaspoonful vin blanc. One dash. Clove essence. You getting it, Sarge? I don't know. I mean, I'm getting tired. Where's Pop, the janitor? He went home. He says he can't eat any more pastries. Well, I gotta have a specialist to taste these things. Oh, Frosty's coming with a number one expert, the best. Uh, now, we stir slowly for two minutes. Fold in the white of two fresh eggs. These eggs fresh? Fresh. The hen was just getting up when we bought them. Okay. Let's see. All right, that's it then. So, into the oven. <laughs> Now, we wait exactly 15 minutes. Let's synchronize watches, huh? You know, I know what's your whole trouble. You're taking it all too seriously. Are you kidding? I'm trying to bake French pastries. I got a gang of hungry soldiers to feed in three hours. Seriously, he says. Sarge, I'm beginning to get a little worried. Corporal London, your troubles are over. Oh, ye grapefruit. Look who he's bringing to taste the pastry. Oh, no. Oh, no, yeah. no we? Oh, Corporal London. Look, Angel, I, I'm, I'm not doing too good. Now, oh. won't you do me a big favor and sort of go home? I can't concentrate with you no, here. No, 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 I will not leave. I know what a good pastry tastes like and look like. So I sample everything. And when I say it is good, it is good. They all taste good to me. You people taste and I'll finish them, Frosty, huh? if you annoy the chef, so help me. I'll, I'll, please, I'll just... please, gentlemen, be all right, this will be my last attempt today. I gotta feed those soldiers. Here goes. Please, you take them out carefully. You're so rough, Novi. Angel, I'm just plum mad at them. Hey, There's... London, does this mean he won't be happy and we won't get double cream delights tonight? Oh, Frosty, someday I'm gonna jam a 50-pound cake right down your throat. You promise good? Mm -hmm. Oh, they look so good, Novi. Yeah, but the other five batches did too, but they didn't taste right. Go ahead, bite when ready. Oh, I close my eyes. Well, Angel, please, give. Yeah, speak, speak, and oh. pass a couple. Novi, uh... Okay. 
Okay, I don't need a stove to fall on me. <laughs> they won't do. Huh? I'm so sorry, Nobi. This can't happen to us. It sure can. It happened. Oh. I can't match Papa Dorsey's pastries. <laughs> All right, now. There's a few notices the lieutenant wants you to hear before I dismiss you hungry characters. One, there's a new shipment of Army green uniforms in. Two, the company has been allocated three promotions to sergeant. That is, I said. There'll also be five new corporals tomorrow. Three, the people of La Portal have invited the company to their annual pastry contest. The uniform for those who go will be Class A with all marksmanship badges and ribbons. This miss. Hey, London, London, are you one of the new sergeants? Just between you and me and anybody else, I am one of the new sergeants. Well, you don't look particularly happy. Well, Frosty, I'm happy and I'm not happy. Tonight, the chef gets the ax. He loses the pastry bed, he loses the confidence of this girl, and he starts saving to pay the whole cost of the wedding. Well, can't you figure something? I've thought myself into two headaches already. I know Sergeant Novak can outbeg Angela's pop, but he's just not producing. There's got to be a key somewhere. Or a recipe. A recipe? No, that's not his trouble. Angela brought him the best. Something else is wrong, Frosty. I, I almost know what it is, but I just can't think it out. Meanwhile, I'm hungry. Come on, let's eat, huh? Yeah, maybe I'll think better with my stomach full. Mmm. <coughs> Roast beef. Potatoes au gratin. Fresh peas. Corn on the cob. Oh, man, you gotta hand it to the chef. He may feel bad, but he sure puts out a spread. Wait a minute, London, look. Wow. Let's find Novak quick. Yeah. Okay, London and Frost, come in. Chef, chef. You noticed the dessert. Oh, did we? Does this mean you found a recipe? Yeah. I mean, did you finally bake a pastry to beat Angela's pop? No. But yeah. you baked special cake tonight, meaning you feel great. I don't feel great. I just wasn't going to let the company go to the contest tonight and taste something better than I bake. Maybe I don't bake French pastry so good, but I still make a good cake. Huh? Amen. Wait a minute, nobody talk. I'm getting it. Huh? Getting what? Frosty, go what? out there on the run and bring me back a piece of cake, quick. Okay. Give up, London. I'm licked. Maybe you are and maybe you aren't, but I have an idea. <laughs> Here's the cake. Thanks. Now, let's all try to remember what the pastry tastes like that Sergeant Novak baked. All right? Take a bite of cake. Come on, come on. With pleasure. Mmm. <clears throat> it tastes better than this pastry. That's what I think. Mmm. Chef, you get it? I've got another headache. Listen to me, I know what happened. I know why you didn't do good with the pastry baking. Chef, when you make a cake, do you put in a tablespoon of this and a pinch of that and a squirt of this? Well, with hundreds of healthy men to feed? What are you talking about? I use gallons, quarts, half... Aha! Uh -huh. That's why you flopped at pastry making. You aren't used to making small pieces of cake. You gotta make big cakes. You, you gotta touch, Chef. You're a genius. It's, it's like making an All-American play football on a tennis court. There you are. You see, even Frosty agrees. You really think that's it? I'm sure that's it. Listen, Chef, make a final try. I'll enter you in the contest by telephone to Angela. You take one of those recipes and multiply it so that you'd be making pastries big enough for a platoon. And by cracky, I'm betting you come up with a wing ding of a pastry that'll taste and look Papa's pastry right off the table. Well, I... I'll do it. I'll make the biggest pastry La Portale has ever seen. Well, we're here, Chef, but I'm afraid to move the pastry. Well, we gotta move it. If it's still in one piece after that bump, you can't hurt it now. We'll, uh, <clears throat> we'll lift it out. I'll, I'll lift the cloth. I'm ready. Okay, I'm set. Uh, I'm ready. All right, then. All, all together. Huh? Oh, easy. Uh, oh, watch, watch, watch it. Careful. Oh, watch it now. Look. Oh, Come on. Look. Oh, 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 no, please. That beautiful pastry. Broken oh. almost enough. Oh, what a pity. Look. <laughs> Now, you people have been coaxing me along to try this, try that. All I've done is bake this monster. Well, it's about time I use my brains, too. Frosty, pass me that knife and that tube of decorating cream. Yeah, here. Thanks. No, 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 you cannot cut it. You'll make it worse. Anything will be an improvement. There we are. You cut oh. off a chunk. It looks like a map. It looks... He 
looks like Normandy. Oh, it sure does, huh? Now the tube of cream here. Yeah. There. Oh. Hey. Oh. Now, we take it in. Yes, a monarch. Good to meet you, Papa Angela. Ah, oh, Sergeant Novak and his friends. Uh, hi. The judges are even now sampling your cake. I must congratulate you. Unique, to say the least. Sir, I, I don't believe I have a chance against your pastry. If I hadn't been so disappointed about our marriage plans, I, I wouldn't have entered in the contest. Pistache, young man, I concede. You what? I concede. I sample your pastry. It is fully as good as mine. And with that clever idea of shaping the cake like Normandy, <laughs> I am defeated. I bow to an outstanding American army cook and baker. Tomorrow, I shall see the priest and there shall be a wedding. Oh, Daddy, Papa! You. <laughs> Papa, the ex-champion. Hey, Sergeant Novak, do you think I could help the judges sample the pastry? Frosty! Uh, come on, I'll help you. Here's a special tip for you high school graduates, something to think about. When you're making plans for your future, look into the future that our United States Army can offer you. Do you want real technical training? Our modern United States Army runs the greatest technical schools in the world because a modern army needs hundreds of kinds of technical skills, radio, radar, maintenance of engines and delicate optical equipment, and many, many others. You can get this kind of training under the Army's Reserved for You training program. Here's the way to do it. First, after you've received your high school diploma, you apply for the course of your choice at your nearest United States Army recruiting station. There are more than 150 courses to choose from. Then, you enlist and start the basic training all good soldiers must have. Then you're all set for some of the world's best schooling. Ask about it at your Army recruiting station. You owe it to yourself to get the facts. The facts on your United States Army. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented, transcribed, in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>